Good evening. Sorry, I'm a fun size Dakota. <laughs> I promise they make them much larger. <laughs> if you've ever seen the movie Fargo, you know what I'm talking about. I'm like Chet Proudfoot and Steve Buscemi had a baby. <laughs> That's all you're going to see now. Buscemi <laughs> face. That's my Indian name. How's everybody feeling tonight? Somebody say aye. I like it, I like it. Uh, my name is Bobby Wilson. I am Sisitawan Wachbetawan Dakota. Uh, yeah, but you can just call me Bobby. You don't have to remember all that. I, I put it on Enrique's shoulders. I, I'm so sorry. Uh, can I get a, a round of applause for our fantastic poets this evening? It takes a lot for uh, people to get up here, and especially for these young people to get up here and express what's important to them. Uh, uh, you know, I, I commend you guys for turning out and really getting up here. Getting up. There's a lot of adults that really cannot do that either, so there you have it. Uh, yeah, I like to tell a lot of jokes, so please pardon my rambling as it comes. Uh, I promise you I also do poetry. <laughs> Um, my poetry's not that jokey, though, so, you know, a typical Indian guy, get your hopes up, let you down. <laughs> well, what can you say? <laughs> You're welcome. Enjoy the coffee and the gentrification. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said I mean, not these guys. These guys have been here for many generations. <laughs> This is great, I love it, yeah. Okay. All right. Shit. <laughs> I did. I'm never, I'm never coming back. Uh, I have my picture up. It's just gonna be the tattoo. All right. Uh, so, gentrification. That brings me to my first poem. This place, this place. That's the title. I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> We used to kick moccasins back in the day, but what do I know about it? Lately, my laces spend nights retracing the steps of specters. There are arrowheads underfoot. Rent was never cheap where I'm standing. Dues paid in trade and blood, but I remember when we used to love here. Nike was just a wing goddess across the sea back then. She hadn't yet swooshed across jogging feet flying over discarded Whole Foods receipts on her way to Urban Outfitters to pick up $20 dream catchers. There's an old timer sitting there with a cardboard sign outside of Ferragamo. Teach a man to fish, it reads. This land is for sure. For sale, he tells me as he hobbles off by his diabetes bootstraps. It took me two and a half hours by bus. A hundred and fifty years on deerskin. One hundred and forty-nine point six million kilometers by way of memory to get to work today. And if I save my money for the next four years, I might be able to pay the security deposit on an apartment that's closer to the water where the rabbits still wonder what happened to all the Indians that used to hang around here. They're still in the area, I tell them. They just had to cut their hair and move out. Shit was getting hot. A white man on LSD drives his beam of light past me, flicks a cigarette that lands on his great-great Cherokee grandmother's imaginary good hair and laughs a sound I can't afford to hear. The eviction notice on my door lets me know I don't belong here anymore. So I wander stolen streets in search of peace in times of turmoil until I boil over in a fit of misery in love with the company that keeps me. Maybe I'll sleep while I walk across the fields of my father's fury where baristas charge five dollars for a 
fucking cup of coffee. Watch me run through middle class mansions and inherited bastions of gold plated privilege. Ride the war pony made of chromium alloy built to subvert and destroy any hopes that I had of classist oppression to turn the rust your prosthetic thrones grafted to the asses of lion loving people hating hipsters. First time homeowners love that shit. Basking in the authentic glory of kitschy knickknacks and brown men that remind them of places they've always dreamed of invading. So please, just leave me be so that I can fulfill my people's 500 year tradition of waiting it out. Thank you.